Hello, my name is David Paletta, and I'm the senior leader at Mission Community Church. Before you begin watching the Sermon of the Week, allow me to pray that you might encounter God right there where you are. Father, I ask that your spirit will be present right where people are watching this video. May they be receptive to the voice of your spirit as they watch in Jesus' name, amen. From all of us at MCC, May God bless you as you watch this week's message. We worship you, Jesus. We love you. We are here for you, Jesus. Receive all glory and honor and praise.
So I've been seeking the Lord over the last um, few weeks. Pastor David asked me if I wanted to speak, and I've been seeking the Lord about what I would say to MCC and seeking the Lord about that and then uh, praying for America, praying for the nations as I have for many, many years, praying for, for what's going on. And there are a lot of big things going on in the world, and um, I'm always trying to seek for understanding, as the Bible says, seek for understanding about what's going on. And um, so I sought the Lord, and I have this word. It's called living wisely in this present age. And I had this whole uh, teaching together that I am going to share. But um, at the end of when I was preparing, God dropped this scripture in my heart out of Amos 9. And it's a beautiful, beautiful word that I think is for our MCC community, and I think it's for some of our individual families. It's such a beautiful word about restoration and harvest and everything, and I'm like, okay, God, I'll, I'll give that word. Like, I'm good with that. But last night as I was um, 
thinking about this, I, I began to be a little troubled because I'm like, Lord, I don't want to give the kind of impression that everything is rosy in the world, that everything is rosy and going great. And, um, and so I was seeking the Lord and asking about that because I do think that some of the things that are going on in the world that we do need to have conversations about those things. We have to have discussions about those things in our community groups and these big issues and such. But uh, so I woke up this morning and uh, so I was asking God, like, is this the correct word for MCC? Because it's such a beautiful word about harvest. And, and so I looked in Amos, and even in the book of Amos, this word looks a little out of place, to be honest, because the whole book of Amos is dark. The whole thing is dark. It's judgment. It's suffering. It's difficult things. And these scriptures are just right at the end. And so it's even in that book, it's a little bit, seems a little out of place. And, uh, but I think for us, it's a now word. It's not a redemptive future word. I think it's a word for our community. And I think it's a word for some of our families as well. And it is this, um, Amos 9, 13, 15. It's a little bit of an odd word too. So hopefully I can break it down and, um, and share it with you. But it says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, he who sows the seed. And the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. And so ordinarily, as you probably know, like a farmer will plow up the ground and sow seed and water seed and wait for the harvest and then the harvest comes. But this is saying the plowman overtakes the reaper and I kind of didn't get that either I'm like it should to me be the reaper overtakes the plowman but it doesn't say that but what it really means is the plowman will come near to the reaper and the treader of grapes will come near to those who sow the seed and so the idea is that the seasons kind of get a little they're almost overlapping they're mixing up and so the idea is that there's something supernatural is happening and in this time, there's just a supernatural abundance of a harvest, a supernatural um, fruit that comes. And so when I was looking this up, I found this little article by David Guzik, and I always like to give credit to whom credit is due, but he said, and his name's not up there, but when this time of blessing and restoration comes, the fruit comes abundantly from unexpected places and is from high quality and is of high quality. And I just think that that's a word for MCC. It uh, speaks to us living supernaturally um, in natural times. It speaks to us being a light to the nations. And, and I really believe that MCC is going to be a place of living water, a well of living water, of life and provision. And I think that during this time that the church, as we are standing up in the church, as we are being a light to the nations, I really believe that, that people are going to come to the church for wisdom. And so it's even more important that we are seeking wisdom. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about today, um, living wisely in, in, this, in this age. I had a similar word to this in February um, after church. One time, I, I just after worship, I went home and I, I, I put this little word on Facebook, which I've never done before or after, but it was really similar. It was that we live in chronological times that we are week to week and month to month, but God doesn't live in time. You know, God does whatever he wants. And I had this idea that as we've persisted and prayed for promises to come through and prayed for things, and maybe it's been slow, sometimes things are slow in coming, but that God can just at any time open heaven and just pour out and change your life and change, change things. And that we've been experiencing a little bit of that in our, in our life this year and in some really beautiful ways. And so I'm so grateful for this. But I also think that this is for some different families in our congregation and one family that I think that this harvest, abundant harvest is for, is for Robert and Kathy, the Whitlows. And I was just thinking about it. And um, if anybody is... Uh, plowed and sowed seed really faithfully over the years, plowing and sowing seed so faithfully over the years. It's you guys, it's your household. And I just, I think there's been a little bit of resistance to the harvest. I think there's a little resistance to all the goodness and harvest that God has for you. And if I were to venture a thought, I think that resistance probably is related to your continual stand and prayers that you've had for Israel just because the enemy hates that so much. So 
Um, I just declare over you and believe that it's a season of harvest for you. We resist the resistance in Jesus' name. We resist the resistance. And God, we ask you to rebuke uh, anything that would cause resistance to this harvest. You rebuke it, would you, God, on their behalf in Jesus' name. I had two visions. One was uh, the harvest, a harvest quickly coming up and just plant, you know, but they were quickly coming up. It was a harvest. And the other was pretty beautiful. It was like a group of people that were coming towards you and they have provision and finances um, coming towards you. So unexpected blessings, unexpected finances, favor, and this harvest for you guys in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm doing this a little opposite again today. So it's funny because usually I would speak and then maybe minister, but I felt that I should give that word first, um, sort of out of step and everything. And um, so I, I'm going to give a little bit more context for what I'm going to say, and then I have a little bit of a teaching, and then maybe we'll have some time for some words, because Psalm 27 was a big word in my sermon, and, and David did that. So anyway, y'all ready? You good? All right. Um, so I am speaking from my, what I feel like is my area of grace and strength as we're talking about living wisely in this present age. And my area of, that I've pursued and invested a lot of time is intercessory prayer. Um, I've just been super fortunate, to be honest, to, um, from the time that I was young, to join some prayer groups and really learn to be able to pray and, and listen to God and hear God and I had that in the 80s, just consistently praying every week with a group of people. In the 90s, I had two ladies I prayed with every week for like almost 10 years. And um, just laid a good foundation in my life, I think. In the, in the 2000s, I, I was able to do that too with a group of people out of Tennessee. And, um, you know, we are able to kind of learn from others and share anointings. And so I'm speaking sort of from my strength. But... Um, as we talk about living wisely, I just believe with all my heart that we as a community, as we take from everyone's strength, um, that, you know, from David Sanford in international ministry and, and EJ with international ministry and from David and his leadership and Sam and his experience, whatever, with Joseph with his fire, with the fire of God and Walton, as we all come together with our anointing and our leadership and our contribution that we can come closer to living wisely in this present age. Amen. So uh, this is my contribution. This is my part. And as we talk about this current age, this current time, two things um, I'm going to talk about growing in a deeper relationship with God. Um, it's what I've pursued. And it, so uh, that's what I'm going to talk about growing a deeper relationship with God and intimacy with God. But from the very outset, I just also would like to say that I believe that anywhere that we are investing in the harvest, there is intimacy with Jesus. At this current time, at this present time, any place that you and I are out in the harvest, there's intimacy with Jesus to be found there. Amen? Because Jesus is in the harvest field. Amen? And so... You know, what is your harvest field? It, it might be your neighborhood. And sometimes I think we think, well, I'm going to reach the harvest in my neighborhood. So we're like, we're going to start a meeting. We're going to invite everybody over. And it doesn't have to be like that. You know, can, my, your harvest field is those one or two or three people that you are in your neighborhood. That's your harvest field. And we want to reach people, right? And um, for me, my harvest field, I have a few people that are on my hall. I'm a teacher. And that's my harvest field. Amen? So wherever you're going to be in the harvest field with Jesus, Jesus is there. Jesus is in the harvest field, and you'll find intimacy with them there. Amen? Um, the fields are white for harvest. It's important to God. The second thing that I just want to say that I think is very current is uh, prayers for the Jewish people. I just want to declare it, you know, uh, prayers for the nation of Israel. It just seems like a really significant place to put our efforts um, at this time and thank you again to the Whitlows for like bringing that witness sort of reigniting that in my heart it's something I used to pray for a good bit in the 80s but um, and to our national sort of leaders in prayer have been leading some real initiatives for prayer for Israel so 
uh, put it in your pocket and think about it. it. It's pretty important, I think. All right, so that's my prophetic part. I did the prophetic part first, and now a little bit of a teaching. I'm doing good with time. Um, and maybe we'll have some words at the end because I have a few words for a few people. We'll see. All right, praise God. We do just love Jesus, don't we? So thankful for his grace that saved us, not of ourselves, but of him, amen? By faith, amen? So thankful for Jesus. All right, I'm going to talk about wisdom. It's almost funny coming out of my mouth because I feel like Sam and I made so many mistakes. <laughs> like, are you sure? I think our kids might be like, are you sure you're going to talk about that? <laughs> We've done some things, right? <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right, wisdom. Proverbs 4. Wisdom is the principal thing. So we shift gears a little bit. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. So talking about living wisely in this time where we find ourselves. Uh, wisdom is the principal thing. It's the main thing. We want to focus on gaining wisdom, and we know it pleases God that we would ask for wisdom, right, from the Word. It tell, the Word tells us that. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge to make good decisions. So... Today I'm talking about deepening our relationship with God, being wise with our choices and with our time. Another wise person, Stephen Covey, he said, begin with the end in mind. He speaks leadership principles. And so um, whenever you start something, a business or your family or your money, you might want to begin with the end in mind. Ask yourself, where do we want to end up? What do we want things to look like in our business? What goals do we have for our church, for our business? Even your family, what at the end, what do I want my marriage to look like at the end? Uh, what do we want our families to look like? What do we want our money to look like? If we want to get to this place with our money, what sacrifices do we have to make? You get the idea, right? Begin with the end in mind. This also applies even to our journey with Christ, with Jesus himself. What do we want to look like at the end? And so to find that out, uh, we can look over at sort of towards the end of the book. Revelation 1. Are you with me? All right, Revelation 1. So we're looking towards the end. And we had some conversations about that in our worship today, towards the end, towards eternity. Uh, Revelation 1. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made you and I, made us to be a kingdom. We're priests. We're a kingdom and priests that serve God. To him be glory and power forever and ever. And this says, look, he's coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. And all the people will mourn because of him. So, and Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the end. I'm the beginning and the end. Who was and is, who was, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. So we are to hasten and yearn for and desire the coming of the Lord. That's towards the end, right? We're looking towards that. And so in, in, within that, we want to prepare ourselves. We want to be prepared. That's wisdom. Be prepared, right? And Later in Revelation, not at the very end, but later towards the end, there is what? It, what is? There is a wedding feast, a beautiful wedding banquet and a wedding feast. And there is a bridegroom. And we were talking about that, loving him, our bridegroom. And there's a bride, a corporate bride, that's prepared herself to be ready to receive the bridegroom. And... So our being wise, our primary goal, our primary um, goal is to love our bridegroom, amen, to be ready for him, to fix our eyes on him like we were talking about. That's our end, to, to, to seek him, to know him. That's our end, and he's our reward. So we're looking at being wise with our time, and so it's wise to... Invest our time in loving Jesus and, and know, knowing Jesus and to get the clutter, put the clutter away. 
Get the clutter, all the stuff, all, even all the things we do and everything. It's Jesus. We're after Jesus himself, the bridegroom. Let's look at what Jesus said. Jesus himself said, Matthew 25. These are Jesus' words. I've sort of gotten fascinated with this parable of Jesus about the, 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 the ten virgins and um, just loving meditating on, on this parable. And isn't it amazing that 2,000 years later after Jesus said this is so appropriate to our lives? It just shows just the brilliance of God. Amen? Just the brilliance of Jesus. So I'm going to read this. Uh, parable from the virgin. So are you following along with me? I know it's a little bit of different things, but we're talking about wisdom. They're talking about primary things. All right. Matthew 25. The kingdom of heaven shall be like likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. So we can think, you know, the bridegroom is delayed. It's midnight, it's dark. And they all are slumbering. But at midnight, a cry was heard, and behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins rose, and they trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, lest there should not be enough for us. You go, get your oil. You go to those who sell and buy oil for yourself. And so they went out to buy oil. And the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the doors closed. And after the other virgins came along and said, Lord, open to us. And he said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I'm going to stop there. So this is a little bit of an exhortation to us. Um, it's about the bridegroom, and it's a lot about that oil, right? So what is the oil? Anyway, I have to back up a little bit. Um, so there are ten, 10 virgins, and when we're looking at this parable, my mind tends to say... There are five good ones and five bad ones. That's what my mind is telling me when I read that. There are five good ones and five bad ones. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to be one, that, I'm going to choose to try to be one of the good ones. But that's not what it says. It says there were ten virgins. So they were all of good character. They were all of pure character. They were all good. Some had lamps. They all had a lamp. But some had this oil. And Jesus tells us what the oil is in verse 12. The fact that he knows you. Now, he knows all of us, and he knows our name, and he knows us. But there's something here that's different with the ones that are wise, and that is that he knows you. You know, we can know people all around, but we can know some people more closely, you know, right? Right? And so this is this idea that Jesus knows who you are. He knows you and you know him. And it's this idea that, you know, that you have spent time seeking him, talking to him, investing in him, desiring him, worshiping him. And from the foolish virgins, you get that it's implied that you can't just run out and get it. That's the thing. You can't just sometime, sometime I'll just run out and maybe I'll, Put a little time into our relationship with Christ. It doesn't come quickly. It comes day after day, week after week, year after year of investing in just loving Jesus. Amen? It's really not all the stuff. Like, I know we like to sort of talk about serving and doing. And honestly, like, we've been in churches and served and done all the stuff, the roles, all, a lot of them, really. It's, it's Jesus himself, amen? Um, so this oil, you know, it's interesting because oil is a little hard to explain, sort of like a relationship. How do you explain your relationship, like, with your best friend? How would you, or your, your children, or your husband, like, how would you explain it? You know what I mean? There's so many levels to it. I feel like oil is like that. I'm sort of fascinated with the oil, and 
oil, it, when you think of oil, it's luxuriant, right? It's rich. It, it, it makes your life better. That's how Jesus is. He makes our life better. And it's costly. Good oil is costly. And uh, it has an aroma. When you break it open, it has an aroma. And that's what we want, right? We want to have the aroma of Jesus on our lives. So in being wise... We want to seek Jesus himself. I have a couple of little tips about ways to seek him and to deepen our relationship with God. Um, some things that just tips to share. And I have, I have 11 minutes. <laughs> I'm really doing well. All right. Number one, of course, the Bible. I can't teach on everything, but we got our Bible people. I can't, I, I sort of went to prayer because that's sort of my area of strength. But um, uh, learn, to standing, learn to stand on the promises of God. Uh, we learn, we read the Bible, we absorb the Bible, we meditate on the Bible, right? I have, do have a little uh, teaching about, out of Peter, um, the precious promises of God that help us to um, participate in the divine nature the Bible, and I think that we're probably entering into a season where we are going to need to live out supernaturally the Bible. We're going to have to really have it in our hearts. Um, I, do, I have been meditating on Psalm 23 this year in 2023, and, you know, standing on that word, the Lord is my shepherd, I'm not going to lack. Um, he's leading me. He's guiding me. He's opening doors for me. He's leading me through the valley. Amen. So standing on the word, believing the word, that's where we can grow deeper with Christ. And, it, you know, as I was even preparing, I'm like I'm sort of strong in some areas, and then some areas I'm, I need to strengthen. I need to pick back up a little bit. I, I tend to meditate on the word, um, and I've gotten a little bit away from, like, reading, reading through the word. So we need to strengthen things, right? Sam is so great at every day reading his Bible, but through the Bible. Anyway. Uh, through prayer, number two, through prayer. And I'm not doing a teaching on prayer, but I just want to give people a tip on prayer. Prayer is easy. I know there's hard, I know there's intercessory prayer, and there's prevailing prayer, and there's persistent prayer and all that, but I just want to encourage people. I've heard people say funny things about prayer. And I just want to encourage you, prayer is easy because prayer is relational. I just want to encourage you if you have a hard time with prayer. I want you to go home. I want you to take it in your pocket that prayer is easy because prayer is just talking to Jesus. It's not hard. You just walk out your yard, take a little walk, say, I'm talking to God, I'm Jesus. Because some people maybe do have trouble with prayer. But you just talk to Jesus. You just say, like, God, I'm really concerned about those people. Would you help them? Amen. Or I'll say, like, God, I see this in my life. You see it. I see it. Please forgive me. Only you can change me. You just talk to Jesus. What's your thinking? And he knows already. The other day I was like, oh, I guess I'll just say this to you because you already know it sort of was like that. Like, oh, I'm, whatever it is, I'm impatient or whatever. But anyway, um, or, God, I really do have this need, or I really am concerned, I really am upset about this, or I really do have this need. So it's just talking to Jesus. Have you heard that Brandon Lake song, I'm just talking to Jesus? Have you heard it? Yeah, I'm just talking to Jesus. So I just want you, if you have trouble with prayer, just say, I want you to take it home with yourself today and say, prayer is easy. Amen? Just talk to Jesus. Because he is relational. He is that bridegroom. He is a father. He is a friend. He is your friend. And I'm going to tell you something, too. If you talk to Jesus, you are talking to someone who's infinitely more kind than anybody you have ever met. He is infinitely more kind and more patient and more gracious and more faithful than anybody you ever met. So just talk to Jesus. It's, it's good. And you're going to develop that relationship. And you're going to be wise. You're going to be invested in Jesus. Amen? Prayer, number one. Number two, that was two. The third one is beholding. Um, Psalm 27. 
I just love that, that Pastor David was talking about that. Um, this is a beautiful scripture. So I don't have to belabor it because David was telling us, but the cool thing is, like, da this is a king. And he says, one thing I've desired, one thing. He's a king. He has armies against him. He has a family. He says, one thing I've desired that I will seek, that I'll dwell in God's house all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, like David was telling us, to behold the beauty of the Lord to, and to inquire in his temple. So if somebody maybe doesn't understand a little bit about what that means, beholding the beauty of the Lord, I just want to tell you just a little bit about what that's meant in my life, and then I'm done. Um, what is beholding him? What is that? And we do have, I think there's a definition maybe up there. I, I behold, I think I lost it. To see or to observe a thing. To see or observe a thing or a person, especially a remarkable or impressive one. Um, so to see or observe Jesus. And um, so what is beholding? So when we come here to worship and we are worshiping and we realize that God is spirit, amen, and that Jesus said God is spirit and we tr worshipers worship in spirit. That's what Jesus said. He's spirit. We worship in spirit. We are spirit. And we, our spirit man connects with God. And we are able to, as we worship and we enter his presence and we become aware of his presence, aware of a spiritual kingdom, then we can behold God, observe him. So you can have glimpses of his face, glimpses of who Jesus is. How many people have ever had a glimpse of, of Jesus in the Spirit showing you his face? Whenever I see Jesus like that, he's smiling. He has a big smile. Sometimes he has a, like a knowing smile, come and sit. But Jesus is happy over us. Anyway, we can have a glimpse of Jesus. We can hear encouragement. How many people have heard encouragement as you're waiting on God and, and, and worshiping? You can hear encouragement. You can have visions. That's biblical. The book of Joel, Acts. Um, I often have visions of waterfalls. Sam and I pastored a church for like 13 years, and I always have these visions, all kind of different waterfalls. That means something to me. There were so many waterfalls in the worship today. In the, did you see the slide? God's so good. Um, if we linger in God's presence, if we wait a little bit longer than your flesh likes, if you wait in God's presence, you're going to find the sweetness of Jesus. That's where you're going to connect with him. And so we wait on him. That's what David said. We wait on the Lord. This is a, a secret of my heart or a, a treasure of my heart. When Sam and I pastored, we had a Sunday service. And every Saturday night for about seven years, we had just a seeking service where we played that worship music and we came in and we just sat there in the presence of God for like seven years. So every Saturday night, that's where we were. Sam called his date night with Jesus. And anyway, we just learned to wait a little bit longer. And I'm so thankful for that. You know, uh, learning to wait and listen. Amen. And um, sometimes we would wait like 45 minutes. Just listen. We're here worshiping. <laughs> and then just Boom, God would come in the room. Power. It was quite beautiful. And um, the Bible says in Corinthians 2, my last scripture, we all with unveiled faces contemplating the Lord's glory. When we're there, when we're in his presence, we are then transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory that comes from the Lord, the Spirit. So beholding, waiting, just seeking him, being quiet in his presence, so worth it. Being like Mary, amen, sitting at his feet, the one thing that's not going to be taken from us.
the visions and the dreams and the things that we have, the words we have, God, that'll never be taken away. The dreams and visions that I've had and the words I've had, that will never be taken from me or from you. And in his presence, we have restoration, healing, joy, deliverance, etc. So just to wrap up, we want to invest our time in the primary things. We want to be wise. Um, make the main things the main things. And the main thing is our bridegroom, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching the Sermon of the Week. We pray that you were blessed by it and you felt prompted to act upon what the Spirit of God was saying to you. If you live in the Charlotte area, we would love for you to come and worship with us at one of our weekend gatherings. That way you can find out more about our church family and what we value most. We encourage you also to give to our ministry so that we might continue spreading the gospel of Jesus to our city and throughout the world. To do so, you simply go to missioncommunity.cc click on the give button and the rest is simple. Lastly, I would encourage you to check out the remaining content on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you will receive all of the reminders for fresh content that we put out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May God bless you and thank you again for watching this week's message.